Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today, man? I'm pretty good, Nathan. Laughing my ass off before we started recording this one. How are you doing today? I'm doing good as well. We have a lot of fun on the not safe for listeners parts of the podcast. Maybe totally. Totally. Maybe we should start recording that and release it as like bonus content for people in the group or something. That's funny. We we should we should see if they want that. I mean, we're we're basically both a couple of Henri twelve year old kids. If <laughs> if if you are listening to the podcast and you want to hear some of the shit that goes down that doesn't make it to the podcast, let us know in the comments below. Which is kind of scary because when you hear what does make it to the podcast. You can only guess as to what we have to <laughs> leave on the cutting room floor. <laughs> so, so what do we what do we got lined up for this week? Well, last week we were talking about control and we spent a lot of it talking about setting boundaries and managing expectations. And so this week I thought we'd talk about dealing with others and and kind of get into some of the nitty-gritty about that. Um really it comes down to communication clarity setting boundaries and managing expectations and dealing with people it's like pushing string the best you can really do is communicate clarify and set boundaries um, I think a lot of people struggle with this aspect of I've, I've got a, a client that I'm coaching on relationships in general it's it's beyond even just the client acquisition thing and it really just comes down to communicating being clear, clarifying, right? The communication and setting boundaries and managing expectations. If, if people can figure out how to do that based on what they will and won't tolerate, life gets really easy, especially in relationships. So let me know if you'll, if you'll entertain me this. Let's take a look at all three of those communications, clarity, and setting boundaries and managing expectations from two points of view. Number one, in the trying to get prospects point of view and then in the i've already got this person as a client and now i'm trying to navigate those waters Mm -hmm. um how do these three things so let's go through point by point and show how communication is important and maybe differs between when you're trying to get a client versus when you you've already got the client right so the communication aspect and let's start with let's start with prospects right or leads the communication aspect this is everything that i talk about with social selling plus personality marketing right if unless you want a cold call whether it's using a phone or private messenger and deal with all the nonsense that comes with that the communication piece of it is, is hey this is who i am this is what i'm about this is what i do this is who i do it for this is why i think it's cool here's my friggin' flag planted in its firm and pick a stance, right? I had a conversation with a client this morning and and I was kind of like breaking this whole market positioning thing down. Your communication starts with you. You've got to know what you're about, who you are, how you do things, and then you get to choose. But only if you choose who you work with and what you do with them, will that happen easy? Well, once you've got those couple of pieces in place, then all you have to do is open your mouth, right? You've got a profile on Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram or wherever the hell it is, or you walk into a networking event, the way you dress, all of that stuff, it's what you're putting out into the world. It's how you're presenting yourself. So fucking speak your truth, right? Communicate with people. And this is kind of where the conversation started is well, should I do this or should I do that? Or how should I say this? Or should I say that? And I was like, well, if it was you and me, what would you say? Came right out with it. And I was like, well, that's what you should tell your market. Like be you, right? That's a really interesting thing in this whole client acquisition thing. Marketing in general is a lot of us are trying to be something different, better, more, less than we are. And guess what? You're giving people a bunch of information that's not accurate. So then when they show up in your world and it's weird, it's because there's a friggin' disconnect there because you didn't clear, you didn't clarify with them what you actually meant. 
which is the next piece, right? So you put a piece of communication out there, regardless of the platform, regardless of how it is, and you get somebody to respond in one way or the other. Your job now is to clarify what you said, what you meant by asking them questions, right? You clarify that so we can both get on the same page. And while you're doing that, you begin setting boundaries so you can later manage expectations. So that's the prospect piece of it. So let's say that that prospect that you put a piece of communication out to and it came off right and they were like, oh my God, that's my kind of people. People like us, like us, right? And they started a conversation with you. And so you clarified, cool. So tell me about what's going on in your world right now, right? Tell me a little bit about your situation. Why would you be looking to talk with somebody that does copywriting, right? Clarifying, pretty simple. Well, in that, the way you're dealing with them, you're training them how to deal with you. That's setting boundaries. Well, let's say you bring that person on as a client, but let's say that it went like this. Communication, you had a little bit of a conversation. You went ahead and jumped through hoops and jumped through your ass and spent nine hours on the weekend putting a proposal together, right? Right? And then you send the proposal on Sunday night or Monday morning and you don't hear back and you don't hear back pretty soon it's Tuesday and then it's Wednesday and then it's the following week, right? And then eventually they reach back out to you and go, sorry, I didn't respond to your 19 messages. Hey, I think we're ready to get going on this. If you can not do that and you can add this to it and you can make the price this and you can do that and da 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 right? You just let them set the boundaries but you go ahead and take them on as a client. And so now you're doing the doing and you're trying to make it all work, but like they talked you into doing it like this for this other price. Now it doesn't really work and you're all frustrated. And they come to you and say, so Nathan, how come this isn't working the way that you said it would? And you go, well, it's this or it's that, or it's this or it's that, or maybe you've just had enough. And you say, because you changed the way that I said we needed to do this. And I didn't have enough backbone to say, no, I'm not going to do it like that. And where most people end up is, is they end up with trying to cobble a thing together and eventually it's an issue. And right now we had a bad experience. They had a bad experience. And we don't have a client. Okay, so let's say that it went a different way. Communications out there, communications out there, communications out there. Somebody reaches out, they raise their hand. You have a conversation. You clarify this and you clarify that, right? It's all good. It's all gravy. You bring them on board as a client. That goes perfect. It goes amazing. They pay you what you ask for. They didn't make you jump through hoops. They didn't ask you to do a bunch of extra work. They said, yeah, we want you to do the thing. You end up on on the same team and you're doing things and it's three months down the road and all of a sudden something comes out of left field and you're like, what the hell are you talking about? Like this is Facebook ads. Facebook changed the thing. So that changes how we need to do this. Why y'all been out of shape? Well, because you didn't set the boundary with them on the front end with a half a dozen or so critical elements of what it's like doing this kind of work together and the shit that might arise and how we're going to deal with that if that's the case. And now you've got a dumpster fire on your hands with a client that you're totally in love with and you think everything's amazing and all of a sudden they want a divorce and they're taking the kids in the house. And there's not a whole lot you can do about it other than grovel. So what most people end up doing is, is they just take it right? They take the beating and they try and maintain the client, but now it's always kind of weird, right? You slept with my sister. You're an asshole. That's <laughs> never going away, right? Those are the basic three ways that people end up with a prospect that goes sideways or a client that's a, a friggin' brain damage to begin with or something amazing that eventually falls apart. Communication, clarifying, setting boundaries, managing expectations. Okay, so I'm going to say every single thing that you said, I've experienced, and some of them I've even experienced recently. I'm going to ask you, though, you've been in this game for a long time. I'm assuming you speak from experience, but I'm going to ask, are these things that you still occasionally have to deal with as well, or have you figured out ways to become the the one that the Neo that's able to dodge all these bullets. Yeah. So this is one of those things that never completely goes away. And here's why we can't control anything other than ourselves. 
And when we're dealing with other people, sometimes they throw us curveballs, right? Here's what I'm talking about. Right now, most people deal with 20, 80, or 30, 70, right? 20 or 30% of the time, it's like, man, that was perfect. Like, I don't know how that worked out amazing, but boy, that was it. Most of the time, there's issues, right? And in last week's episode, I kind of made mention of, you know, most people think a little bit of drama is like a little bit of drama when really, if you break it down, if you really understood what you wanted your life to be like and you wanted in your life, you'd go, oh my God, I would never deal with that bullshit. It's actually not a little bit of drama. It's a giant amount of drama. And there's a little here and a little there and a little here and a little there all over your world. What I'm talking about is I want it like 97, 98% to 2 or 3%. I'm dealing with humans. There's always going to be some weird shit that comes out of left field that you can't control. But understanding that I can only control myself, how I respond and what actions I take, communicating, clarifying, setting boundaries, and managing expectations to the best that I can is the best that I can do. And there's no perfect world. Man, I feel like we just wrapped up everything in like a 10 minute podcast episode. Uh, but I... I guess just to do the listeners justice, I don't want to, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but are there any final thoughts on this before we're out of here? Yeah. Hopefully you can't hear Gretel chewing in the background. Um, I, I kind of brought this up in last week's podcast. Everything comes down to basically a half a dozen or so values, right? If, if, if we think about it, all emotions, all of the different distinctions that we place on all these emotions come down to really like two or three, maybe four actual emotions, feelings, right? Anger and frustration and sadness. They're all different distinctions of the same kind of bad feeling, love, admiration, gratitude. They're all different distinctions of basically feeling good. Well, in all of this that we've talked about this week and in last week, it really comes down to this understanding what your values are and structuring your life in such a way that that's how you get to operate. So if that's the case, if you ultimately got to choose what you had and how you had it, can you look at your life and your business right now and go, this is exactly how I want it. I would, I would say that 97 or 98% of the people on the planet can't say, you know, this is exactly how I want it. And the other 2 or 3% totally know that it's about 97 or 98% exactly how they want it because they can't control other people. So the other day I posted in the group uh, before meeting Landon versus after meeting Landon post. And the before meeting Landon was – me asking before I got onto a call with a prospect, how can I get this person to buy from me versus after meeting you? The question that I'm asking is how can I make sure that this person is actually getting what they need and I actually want to give it to them. And that was a huge mindset shift for me. And I think that that, if I can just add that as my own two cents to this episode, I think that that's one of the differentiators between what you teach and what the majority of the sales gurus out there teach. So um, it's, it's been a huge mindset shift for me and it's been a huge um, shift in my happiness of the work that I do take on. So uh, if you're listening to this and you're like, Landon's full of shit, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Go ahead and keep living that way. But uh, if you're listening to this and you're like, I'm going to give it a try, you're going to end up really liking the results. Mm Mm-hmm. Here's where I eventually ended up at in, in all of my years of wisdom. I'm still a kid, right? I've got kids who are teenagers. I've had a couple of careers. I've been married twice. Like I've been around the block a couple of times and it always comes down to this question. Is it how I want it or not? Cool. From that place, I am able and capable of changing any aspect of it that I need. Okay, cool. It's not a numbers game. It's a people business for me. 
if you're listening to this and you do something where it's a numbers game, like I don't know why the hell you're listening to this, but if you're also in a business where it's a people business, that means you're going to have to deal with people. People are messy. People are difficult. Cool. So I don't know about you, but for me, I'm going to structure my entire world to shield me from all of the shit that I really don't want. And I'm going to be really selective about what it is that I do want. And I'm going to clarify everybody that comes into my world to the best of my ability. And I'm going to set boundaries and manage expectations to where I'm dealing with basically a lot of, this is fucking awesome. And everything stems from that. And where I was kind of going a little bit ago with the half a dozen or so values, everything comes from that. We, by and large, are really good at defining what we don't want. Most of us are not very good at defining exactly and specifically what we do want. That's the difference between the haves and the have-nots, at least from my perspective and my experience. Mm -hmm. So spend some time defining in a client relationship, what is it that you actually want and make sure that you're, uh, make sure that you're filtering people out based off of those. Okay. So if people want to dive a little bit deeper into your world, I know that you've got the sales gorilla group. What's the easiest way to find that? You can go over to Facebook and type in the sales gorilla and find my business page, or you can type in getting clients without being salesy and join our Facebook group. Awesome. And if they want to check out more of the podcast, salesgorillapodcast.com, bitches. Fantastic. Until next time, Landon, we will catch you later and you have a good one, man. Peace out, Cub Scouts. Hey, if you really actually want to go deeper and this all totally makes sense, go to my business page on Facebook and send me a message with, hey, what's up, LP? Just heard the podcast. If we're a fit, we'll have a conversation. If we're not, I'll set a boundary. Peace out, Cub Scouts.